Hey everyone, this is Bo. In this video, I set out to build this little entryway bench where you can have a seat and take your shoes off or have a seat, put your shoes on. You'd also store shoes on this little shelf here or possibly other doodads. Maybe you're a troll collector and you want to put trolls there. Completely up to you. The bench is made from oak. It is 11 inches deep, 18 inches high, and 26 inches long. In this build, I did try a couple of different things. I uh, tried using epoxy as, a, as my glue uh, for the first time in a long time. And I also tried a little something different with my finishing process. So please stay tuned, check out all the build videos and see how those two things turned out. And as always, thanks for watching. I have all the lumber milled up. I have the, the slats for the lower shelf here. I got the table or the uh, the bench seat sitting below it. It's individual pieces have been milled. I then glued those two together to form one one large seat that will eventually get flattened again and then shaped later on in the process. Here are my four leg pieces sitting over here. Um, right now, I was laying out the the uh, well, I'll say the angles. This this bench has a three and a half degree pitch if you're looking from the side and then from the front it has that same three and a half degree uh, angle or splay inward. And so what I'm doing is I'm, uh, so I don't screw this up, I only have four leg pieces, I'm, I'm laying out just roughly what chunk of wood should get removed to make that, that work out. So this is the front right leg I have in my hand. I'm leaning it to the left to the center. I then know this corner is high, so I'm putting just a rough mark there. I then lean it towards the center of the piece. I know this corner is high again, so I'm marking that, that I gotta cut this corner off and this corner off from both sides. And I do the same with the bottom, right? As I'm pitching this in and in, I know this corner is the high point and that's gotta get cut off so it lands flush on the ground. I'm doing that for all four of the leg pieces. I'm then going to cut them all to size on the table saw using a combination of a miter gauge at three and a half degrees and then the bevel of the uh, table saw blade at three and a half degrees. From there, I will be laying out the, uh, the stretchers or the rails, or you want to call these the horizontal pieces between the legs. And I'm going to lay them out um, and cut those angles at three and a half degrees as well because they will mate up. And then there's going to be loose tenons that are going to hold all this stuff together. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be cutting these next, and I already said that, so here we go. I did want to take a minute and talk a little bit about the legs. So one thing that you might have saw in the video was me lining these all up and making sure that they, uh, they were correct. And what I mean by that is when you have a splayed angle that goes in left to right and in front to back, when you bring all the leg pieces together, they should make a point in the very center. Now, if you can kind of, it's hard to see. It's such a slight angle, but the center of the board of the legs are all coming to a point. And then when you cut the bottom, it's the exact opposite. There should be a a the a, a hollow in the very very center where all the legs meet. And so that no, so that's an indicator that you've got your cut set up right. Uh, and as well, <laughs> with this such being such a shallow angle, um, all the all the wood can actually stand up on its own. Um, and so you're able to actually lay these out and do like a, I don't know, a triple, quadruple check that all the angles are correct. Um, so this top is nice and flat. The bottom's flat. That means that all the be bevels and miters were all cut correctly. And now I can proceed on to cutting the, the stretchers and then further laying out the mortises. 
so I know exactly how wide I want the top of my legs to be apart. And I also know how high off the ground I want my lower stretchers, but I don't exactly know how long they should be. So I, I cut one of the sides uh, at the three and a half degree angle, and then I butt it up against the leg and trace how long it should be on the actual piece. Go back to the table saw and cut it to its final length. And then I cut the other side to the exact same size. So next up, I'll be laying out all of the mortise locations in the legs and the stretchers. Um, since I'm using loose tenons, both sides need the mortise. And I'm gonna start by laying out the tenon on the upper rails that will be slightly different than the lower rails since um, the angle, right, the angle of this, the, the tenon kind of goes down an angle this way, right, so you have to offset it a little bit one direction or another as well. I'm very close to the top here, um, so I don't want to have a very small amount of material at the very top of my, my mortise wall. So I'm going to play with that a little bit, get them laid out the way I like, and then use my stretchers as the uh, reference for my legs. So I'll put them in place where I want these to end up, mark the leg, transfer those marks to the square, uh, and then we'll be all set there. So here we go, gonna lay out some mortises and then um, after that, we're gonna cut some mortises. couple things I got done off camera was creating the slots in the rails to accept uh, like those z-clip style tabletop fasteners that that in conjunction with some dowels will be how I will um, attach the stool top to the base so I got those cut on the router table so I was also uh, off camera chamfering the the legs the bottom of the legs where they're gonna meet the floor uh, when I was doing that, using a palm router and a chamfer bit, I lost lost a chunk, if you can see it here. Um, I searched high and low for that part for probably, I don't know, half an hour or so. Wasn't able to find it. Don't know if it just shattered into a bunch of smaller pieces or if it somehow made its way outside. I, I really have no idea where it is. Um, so I need to fix this. It's the front left leg in the front face, the front left leg, so it's not really, you can't really hide it. Um, so, going to um, kind of clean up an edge here where it meets the rest of the piece, flatten it out with a chisel, and then um, cut a small chunk from the cutoff from this leg, and then glue, uh, glue and clamp that into place. And then after it dries, flush it all up.
All right, so as the, the glue dries on my leg fix, I'm turning my attention to the bench top. Uh, and so what I've done is I've milled and, uh, and jointed one edge, then cut to width on the table saw, and then finally cut it to length on the miter saw. And I've also laid out kind of the scoop of this seat. Uh, it's dropping down three quarters of an inches in the middle, and it's an inch and a half off each end. And um, to remove the waste on this seat, I'm going to attempt to use my bandsaw. Um, the bench is about 11 inches deep. The resaw capacity on my bandsaw is, I think, about 12. So it should all work out, but I've never uh, tried to resaw anything this tall before. So we're going to give it a shot, see how it goes. So after the bench seat was all prepped and sanded, I then turned my attention to the legs and stretchers and got them all sanded up. And now I'm moving on to the glue up. So I'm, uh, I'm using epoxy here. Um, I have only used this uh, maybe once other one other time in the past when I was making a big, big barn door. Uh, and, and note as well that I cut off a lot of three and a half degree chunks of scrap that I could tape on to the legs uh, to keep the, the clamp faces parallel to one another. And doing this before you get the glue on the piece saves you a lot of stress and running around. All right, so I've gotten the bench out of the clamps. It is now clamped to my workbench behind me here. And uh, I'm in the process of cleaning up a bunch of um, epoxy that got kind of near, the, near where the glue joints were. And then I must have had some on my hands, on the bench, because it's kind of everywhere. And it's kind of messy, actually. It kind of gets all over the place. The reason I chose to use epoxy on this um, was I initially thought I need a little bit more um, like a little bit longer working time with the adhesive because I was going to try to glue up the whole bench at one time really <clears throat> practically how it worked out is I ended up still gluing it up in pieces I did the sub the, the front and back assemblies and then I glued them to the, the intermediate um, rails here so really didn't need it um, but I did notice too that a couple of the the mortises in like the legs were like not as tight as I'd want, so I did use epoxy with a little bit of uh, filler in there just to help give it any uh, any gap filling um, properties it may have, where PVA glue wouldn't wouldn't fill a small gap where where epoxy with some filler may. Um, probably once again, probably didn't really need it. Probably could just use regular PVA glue. The moisters weren't weren't that loose um, to really drive all this extra work and clean up. Anyway, live and learn. So now I am spending a considerable amount of time um, scraping, chiseling, and sanding away epoxy on the bench. So back to it.
Initially, I did not cut the tops of the top stretchers with that three and a half degree angle. I figured it was just easier to do that after everything was glued up and I can get it nice and flat. Um, I don't know if this was what was a mistake or not, or led to some issues down the road here. Um, but next time, I'll probably just cut this three and a half degree angle on the table saw before I glue it all up. So my plan here is to drill a couple dowel holes and then insert dowel centers and set the seat in its final location and uh, make the imprint where the dowels line up on the seat. And so I'm using a doweling jig with a little bit of an off cut to get it oriented properly. And now I'm going to put the seat on the base and this is where I noticed that it is not sitting flat whatsoever on the base. So I take it off, grab a straight edge, and note that when I resawed all that material off to, to form the seat top, to scoop it out, uh, it really started to deform there. That, that got really high on the bottom, so I had to bust out the hand plane and, and knock quite a bit of material off the bottom so it would uh, sit better on the base. So after getting the seat bottom flat, I notice there's still a couple high spots on the base. So I'm cleaning them up with a, with a hand plane and uh, and a sander. Once I'm happy with the with the fit, I can finally move on to putting the dowel centers back in the base, marking their locations on the bottom of the seat, and drilling the corresponding holes in the seat bottom. So now I move on to dyeing the wood. Um, I traditionally use trans tint in water, uh, but I've heard that if you use uh, denatured alcohol in dye, it doesn't raise the grain. So I did give that a shot on my first go round. That was a complete disaster. Uh, it dries so fast that I had lap marks everywhere. So I had to come back with denatured alcohol on its own in a rag and just kind of clean everything up uh, before I move forward with my original plan of just water and trans tint. After that had dried for a cut for a day, I came back out and hit it with some oil-based stain. Uh, and as usual, you know, uh, apply it liberally, let it dry for a bit, come back and wipe off all the excess. And a combination of the dye and the stain gives, gives it a really nice dark rich color. All right, after letting that oil-based stain dry for three and a half days or so, I come back and start spraying on some water-based poly. Right here, I'm spraying the seat for the bench, starting with the bottom and then flipping it over and working on the sides and finally the top. Now I'm moving on to those small little shelf pieces, which were kind of a pain in the butt just because it's you spend more time, I think, maneuvering them than you do actually spraying them. All right, so pay attention closely here for dumbass move number 74. Oh, son of a... After cleaning this up and covering it up, I'm able to uh, finally move on to the bench base, um, which is a little tricky to, to spray just because of all the little corners and nooks and crannies, but um, just a, a bunch of light coats really helps from, uh, from building up too much in the corners and, and potentially developing a drip. After four coats of water-based poly uh, with a scuff sand in between, I'm now finally ready for assembly. I first start by assembling this cleat to the inside of my lower stretcher. 
and this is what eventually will support these uh, slats for the shelves. And so I'm just using a using a spacer that I kind of predetermined before the the video started here, and I am um, just going through and and using one or a screw per side per slat. Now it's time for the dowels. They go in the base first and then uh, gonna bring over the seat here and get that set on there. Flip it over and this is where I start to install the tabletop fasteners. There's six of them in total. Two on the front, two on the back, and one on each side. I just locate them in their corresponding slots, pre-drill a small hole, and then drive the screws in. And there you have it, one bench all complete. Here are a couple of finished photos showing off some of that nice Coruscant grain on the front of the legs and showing off the, uh, the color of the bench after the, the, the multiple steps in the finishing process. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way this bench turned out. A um, couple of mistakes here and there, a couple of things I learned from. As always, Thanks for watching, and have a good one. Uh, time to pressure wash. So I'm going to get to fixing this.